Welcome back guys, Wild FM here and we are now on the 1st of January 2019 so that means it's time for you to see how we done in December and see if there is any news that you need to be aware of. So first of all you've probably spotted straight away there is a red up there that is not normal for us but we will come to that later. So let's have a quick look at what's going on at the club, a small blip there. So, team stats in the league, we are 20 matches in. We have got the second highest goal scored at the moment. We are the second best at conceding. No red cards yet. Fantastic, I like a nice clean team. And let's have a look at how our players are getting on. So, player stats. Top goal scorer for us at the moment is uh, Higuain, 22 goals. He's also got the highest average rating at 7.51. Most assists have been from Zabacosta and Higuain, 9 piece. And Memphis Depay has got 6 man of the match awards. Been impressed with him so far this year. I think he's been a good signing. 7 goals in 18 appearances in the league with 4 assists. 13 goals in 24 appearances in total with 7 assists. So I think he's making a big impression on our game and the way we play. So let's just have a look at what there is for you to know about at the moment. There's been a lot of interest shown in Pedro in recent weeks. Um, let's just have a look at him here. Who's after him at the minute? So we've got Tottenham, West Brom and Atletico Madrid after Pedro at the minute. I am, I've i told him I'm happy to accept offers for him. But they've got to be the right offer for us. Uh, I'm not really sure how much I'd let him go for. I think I'd drop down to about £25 million if I need to. Um, but at the minute it's not really me that needs... That need them. They're all major interests as well, so I might be able to get a bit of a bidding war going on. I'll, as you can see, I set my asking price for him at 40 million. I know no one's going to come in for him at that, but at least they they're still interested at that sort of amount. So maybe I will get a decent load of money for him, and if we can get a decent bit of money for him, who knows what we can do with it and Maybe we can improve our squad a little bit more. Um, also last month, we spoke about our youngsters. And as it turns out, Young Player of the Month award was Tammy Abraham in the Championship. We spoke about Abraham and whether we wanted him back at the club and the fact that we wish we could bring him back to the club. His stats were on the decline on the last episode, but they're starting to raise again there. Let's have a look at his form. So, every other game at the minute, he seems to be putting the uh, ball in the back of the net. Not too bad at all. Um, 10 goals in 21 league appearances for them. Maybe he would be a little bit better if he had some better people providing opportunities for him. But certainly a player that I will be looking at in the future to come in. And if he's not number one choice, I think he definitely will be number two. I can see uh, both Higuain and Giroud moving on in the summer. Uh, Higuain's the loan's up. Yes, I've got option to buy, but I don't think I will be buying him. Um, let's have a look. I think I've got an option to buy him anyway. Uh, contract, contract info. Uh, optional future fee, thirty-two million. So I could buy him for thirty-two million at the end of the season. And the way he's been scoring goals, it's certainly something to think about. It just depends on how his physicals hold up at the end of the year. He's thirty-one now, so. Yeah, if his physicals hold up, then maybe it'd be a signing to make. As for Juru, he's pretty much been frozen out this season anyway. Um, 
So as you can see, this is kind of the easiest way to look at him. He's only played in eight appearances this season. Six of them were as a sub. He's not got a goal for us at the moment with four starts and seven as a substitute. One assist. He's not made the most of the chances he's been given. And I do think that he will be on his way out at the end of the season. So let's have a look at how they are feeling about me now. So we've moved to very good now as opposed to just good. Um, players have uh, forged an extremely strong understanding now. They're playing really well together. Everything is just coming together for them. Um, dressing room atmosphere has gone down slightly. Um, there's a strong sense of unity between the players and should be no cause for complaint about the way things are going. I think that's only gone down because of a loss there. Um, we've currently got four players at the club who are now unhappy. So let's take a look at the players who are unhappy. We've got needs to leave for first team football. Pedro, we knew about that. Cabrero uh, wants to join Lanús as they would allow him to return to a play, to play closer to home. Now, I've told Carrera at the start of the season if someone comes in for 3 million, then he can go, but no one has. I mean, this club come in for about half a million. All right, he wants to go home, but you're under contract, boy. You're staying until the contract's up. Then we've got William. We all knew about William. He wants to leave. And we've got Emerson. He wants a chance in the first team, and I've made a promise to him he can have a chance in the first team. Uh, let's have a look what sort of chance he's getting at the minute. As you can see, uh, he's been sporadic. He's, he's played over half the games that he's been available for in the last 10, so I can't see why he's really complaining. 12 or 20 appearances. But he is starting to get some assists in for us, so... As long as he keeps doing the job, he can keep playing. That's all I care about. And the player's managerial support, still very good. So that's what we like to see. So let's take a look at how our fixtures have gone this month. So after our really impressive run, it didn't start brilliantly for us when we uh, took on Fulham. And it's a bit disappointing, to be honest with you. Nil-nil at Craven Cottage. Let's take a look at what um, we lined up with and where it went wrong. So we started with William Goal. Uh, we've got Apsur Equator, Ampadu, Christiansen, David Louise, and Alonso across the back. Loftus-Cheek and Jorginho in the middle. William, Hudson and Doy, and Giroud up top. Now... Looking at that, straight away, I can tell you where it's gone wrong. I have underestimated this Fulham team. I've gone with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven non-first team regulars. I mean, that's really quite a... Maybe he's a half regular, so we'll say six non-first team regulars. So, to come out with a nil-nil, I think it's deserved. It's I'll hold that totally on my shoulders. I should have took them more seriously, especially after the 2-2 draw earlier in the season in the Cup. Um, as you can see, we got more shots off than them, but we didn't create anything clear-cut. And the average rating speak for the sale, 6.74 to their 6.93, so they had the better of their game. They had a way they wanted to play. They played their way. Had I have had my uh, better players in, you know, I didn't even make any substitutions in this game. I just completely underestimated them. Um, Higuain was only on the bench. I didn't. I was never going to use him. Eighty percent. He's getting over a slight knock, but I had Hazard. I could have brought on Kovacic. Could have brought on Zabacosta, who's been really good down the right hand side, creating chances. But I didn't, and it it could end up being a game that I come back to regret. So next up, Arsenal at home. 
and let's have a look how we lined up against Arsenal and what Arsenal did to line up against us. So we went with Kepa in goal. We brought back in the first team as far as Alonso, Luiz, Christiansen, Rudiger and Zabacosta. Kante and Kovacic in the middle. Higuain, Hazard and Depay up top. Now Arsenal went with their uh, probably strongest 11 there looking at it. Leno in goal, Mustafi, Conchelny, Skoratis, Monreal, Torreira, not yet, uh, Gundalzi. Oh, and I put a bang away. How's he getting on this season? Been one of the uh, players that have always been spoken about. So. Overall form at the club, 18 goals in 27 games for him. Still banging them in. So, as you can see, we've outperformed them when we've got as far as going forward goes, creating the clear cut chances. They've beat us on possession, but that's a normal thing for us this season. We seem to be playing more counter than anything else. Um, and down to the average rating 7.13 to 6.71. So, deserved win when you look at the average ratings. And it all started out with a goal from themselves. Let's have a look at the goals and see just how it all started out. Right. Mkhitaryan plays it back to Mustafi. Mustafi plays in the long ball. Zaba Costa heads it down to Agbangi Yang and that is I'm going to say Zaba Costa's fault Hazard pulled it back with a penalty and then Higuain plays it in the box David Luiz pulls it down on the outside out wide to Depay using the width again into Christiansen and at this point we were pushing forward and Christiansen as you can see the centre back well forward there and here's another one of our breaks, Kovacic to Depay, Depay over the top to Higuain, and Higuain taking it on his left foot, leaves Leno on his knees. So, up next, there's another 3-1 win, this time away to Cardiff at the Cardiff City Stadium. And once again, we lined up with a pretty strong side. I think the only player that's uh, changed there is Emerson in for Alonso. So, Kepa, Alfred Equator, Rudiger, Cahill, or oh, Cahill's in as well, David Luiz and Emerson, Kofovic and Kante, with Depay, Hazard and Higuain up front. And this time, the counter, we were lucky. Cardiff out shooting us. And every bit there, no clear cut chances for either side. We got a half chance in the game. Managed to control the possession a little bit more this time. Um, but if you come down to average ratings, it's just some poor ratings from Cardiff players. Um, it weren't particularly poor all over the pitch. I think this one average rating has really dropped them down 5.9. And we've got our 7.2. Everyone put in pretty much a 7 in this game. And again, it is another game where we fell behind, but we pulled it level, took the lead for Higuain and Kovacic, finished the game off. We then moved on to our final group game in the Europa League, and we got a 4-0 home win over AZ Alkmaar. And let's just see how we went with the lineup on this game. So once again... Knowing that we'd already gone through, able to make a couple of changes. So we started with Kepa in goal, Emerson in at left back this time, Ampadu and Cahill in the middle, and Rudiger and Athwood Equator finishing off that uh, back line. Kante and Kofovic in the middle, Higuain, Depay, and they were accompanied by Hudson and Doy this time. And we really took it to them in this game, really getting forward at every opportunity. Creating clear cut chances, dominating the possession, keeping our passing, making sure we're connecting with each pass that we want to connect with. 
plenty of crosses into the box there and to finish it at 7.83 rating and 6.43 for them and if you just look at our all these greens that are down here we do like a load of greens i've told you that before memphis to pie the man in the match with two goals it was never really a contest there so the next game that we uh, went on to win was against liverpool one of our title rivals this season we picked up a 4-1 win against these and I thought it would be a tighter game than what it was. And the stats say it should have been a tighter game than what it was. But I think key mistakes in key areas cost Liverpool dear. And if you have a look at our uh, line up here, we've only got one player that didn't make it into the green. So we started with Kepa in goal, Alonso, Louise, Christiansen, Rudiger and Zabacosta across the back. Kante and Kovacic in the middle. Higuain. Hazard and Depay up front and as you can see everything is very very even in this Liverpool creating the better of the chances we were getting in for half chances but that was enough to get the job done possession it's about 50 50 yes we shade it a little bit we picked up our passing I think that's the most amount of attempted passes we've had this season 464 against any of the big boys and then we get down to average ratings, it's just we put in a better performance on the night, 7.88 to 6.39. And let's take a look at the goals on this game. So what have we got? So the game starts out. Out to the pie, over the top, a nice long ball over the top there. The pie taking on Robertson there, into Higuain, and keeper beating at his near post, probably a bit too easily there. So Kovacic picks up the ball, plays the ball through to Eden Hazard. Hazard dribbled it through, a nice little back heel there to Kante. Did you see that back heel? That was really nice, and we take a 2-0 lead. Milner pulls one back from the penalty spot. Kepa should have probably got to that one. Corner kick. Zabacosta brings it out of the box to Kante. Kante takes the shot but it bounces wide. And then follow up. Straight away 3-1 lead there. Virgil van Dijk tries to clear. Depay sends the ball through to Higuain. And Higuain buries it near post again. This keeper's going to be in for some stick after this game, I think. We then took on Watford in the uh, Carabao Cup quarter-final, where we managed to run out just the 1-0 winner. And just a quick look at how we set up in this game. Once again, Cabarero, our goalkeeper. Emerson, Louise, Christensen, after the equator dropped in at um, centre-back from right back today, we were really limited on our centre-backs for this game. And Zabacosta out on the right. Jorginho, Loftus-Cheek in the middle. And Higuain, Hudson and Doy, and Pedro in up front. I wish we had have been able to get more goals in this game, but we were just not able to create the chances required. I mean, yes, we've had 18 shots, but they were scrappy all the way through. It was a scrappy game. Probably not one that um, I'd want to repeat too often. 16 fouls. It's a lot of fouls in the game. They're just breaking up play all the time. These two holding midfielders, we found it hard to get past them. But we are through to the semi-final. Next game was uh, Tottenham, where we travelled to Wembley, and Wembley was not a nice night for Tottenham. So we lined up, we had Cabrera in goal, Zara Costa, Brudiger, Christensen, David Luiz and Emerson across the back, Kofovic and Kante in the middle, Depay, Hazard and Higuain the front three, and all of them Played really well today, linked in well, got the job done. 
And as you can see, Tottenham, probably the better of the teams, to be honest with you. But we created five clear-cut chances out of our eight shots. That is really impressive. If you could do that every week, it'd be no worries at all. And I really think that's probably where we got them. We were slightly better off our average rating, but the clear-cut chances is what's made all the difference in today's game. As you can see, we took a 3-0 lead, but then Tottenham started turning it around. Ended up being 3-2, probably got away with it in the end. Up next was our first defeat in the Premier League this season. Again, it was another 3-2, but this time in favour of Manchester United. If there was anyone I didn't want to lose to, it was these. Again, we started with Cabrera and goal. We had a back line of Zabacosta, Rudiger, Christiansen, David Luiz and Alonso, Kofovic and Jorginho in the middle, Depay, Hazard and Higuain up front. Yes, I haven't got Kepa in goal, but I did think this would be a strong enough side. I mean, it's, it is our first team, it's just missing Kepa. But no, it wasn't to be. Um, looking at the sides, matter put in a really good performance against his old club. So, you just have a look at the shots. We were more attacking than what Manchester United were. Created more chances. We had more possession. 80% pass completion to their 73%. But on the day, player performance, it's their players that have outperformed ours. And shading it by one goal, it probably shows why. And let's have a look at the goals that we've conceded and find out why we've conceded them. So we've had a corner come in there, back post from Jones, and I do not know how Caballero got beat at the post from there. Short to Lindorf, Lindorf heads it to Hazard, and Hazard makes it 1 all. Hazard plays it back to Kofovic. Kofovic, a nice long cross ball to Emerson. Emerson brings a cross into Higuain and it's 2-1 Chelsea. And the fact we got to the 80th minute before we conceded our next one, this was where it hurts. So Matter plays it out wide to Young. Young into the box. Matter, and that is a fantastic goal for Matter. Left footed volley. He deserves the goal. Young on the wing again. And again, we're not closing anyone down in the wings Fred Alexis Sanchez scores the winning goal a little bit unlucky from our defence for it to just bounce off him to fall at Sanchez's feet but it's just the way that the game's gone and our final game of the month came against Everton it was a 3-0 win at Stamford Bridge the way we lined up today was with our standard uh, back line of Emerson, David Luiz, Christiansen and Rudiger accompanied by Asper de Quaita. The midfield had Kante and Loftus-Cheek playing instead of Kovacic today and he did put in a really good performance of an 8 there and we had Higuain, Hazard and Depay up front and to a degree Everton matched up to our um, lineup. They decided to play the extra man in midfield instead of up the top, which is probably just to try and stop where Hazard would drop back into midfield. So I can understand that to a degree, but it hasn't worked for them. As you can see, we've completely out-attacked them all the way through this game, not creating any clear-cut chances, which is a bit of a worry out of 26 shots. But all the way through the game, we've outplayed them, outgunned them, out attacked them and then average range of our players compared to theirs 763 to 646 and let's take a look at goals on this game and see if we see anything special so after the quite over the throw to Loftus-Cheek 
Loftus Cheek plays a long ball forward to Higuain. Higuain takes it past the defence and just slots it home for the first. So Kante out from a corner here. Emerson into the box, back to Kante. Kante again takes a shot and it bounces off the defender to find Depay, who's there waiting to bury it. Zabacosta tries to cross, it's cleared away, only as far as Louise. Emerson out on the left wing here, into the box, and there's Depay with his second of the game, and Chelsea's third. 3-0 win, a good way to cap off the end of the month. So let's take a look at where we're left for the month. So, competitions. Premier League sees us sitting top after 20 games. The lead has been cut down to three points now. We did have a five-point lead last time. Um, as you can see, Higuain has moved right up in the goal-scoring stats. He's now top goal-scorer in the league. Memphis has moved up to top man of the match in the league. Let's have a look at some of the other competitions we're in. So Euro Cup first round has been drawn. We've got Spartak Moscow to contend with in the next round. Got some informed players there. Anyone to really be worried about? Luis Adriano seems to be their top scorer. I can recognise his name. Milan and Shakhtar. Never really got going at Milan, no, did they? We've pulled Blackpool in the FA Cup, and that'll be at Stamford Bridge. And the semi-final, we are playing Norwich. Delia Smith's Norwich. That will be fun. And they're currently sitting 8th in the Skybet Championship. Well, that's all from me. We've had a good run of it, um, albeit with some results not going our way in this month. But hopefully we can bounce back in January. And who knows, we may even get some signings done in January. I'll leave you with a picture of how the uh, club are feeling about me. Thank you very much for watching. Please leave me a like and let me know how you think it's going. Thank you very much. Goodbye.